Here at A-Court Media, we offer a place where we can civilly discuss all things political, from national issues to local elections. This is In the Arena. I want to welcome Cameron Bunting Parker, a candidate for state representative from the 150th Legislative District to In the Arena. Welcome, Cameron. Thanks, Philip. Glad Thanks to have for, you. Well, thank you for having me. All right. So, uh, Cameron, you and I have known each other over 25 years, uh, but there may be a lot of folks out here that don't really know who you are. So, so tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, I've lived in southeast Missouri my entire life. I grew up in Risco. Um, I'm the oldest of three. So my mom and dad had two, three other children. My brother and sister still live here in southeast Missouri. I'm an attorney in Malden. I practiced in Dunklin County my entire life. So I'll jump back. I went to school at Risco, graduated from there. Believe it or not, I played college basketball for two years at Central Methodist. So um, finished up at Mizzou. After Mizzou, I went to law school in Jackson, Mississippi. I moved home to start my law career and my family. And right when I moved home, I married my husband, Chad. We've been married for 23 years. We live in rural Campbell, almost, almost full of Mina, but rural Campbell. Have two children, Claire, who is going to be a senior at Mizzou, and then Charlie, who is going to be a sophomore at Three Rivers, and he plays baseball over there. So we have a little family farm over there. I, t I tell people what we do on our spare time, which is not a whole lot, is ride horses, do some things like that. So... One of the things we like to do here on uh, In the Arena is to help educate our viewers. So you're running for the 150th district. Used to be the 163rd district back when I was in the legislature, you know, 20 plus years ago. Um, but it's changed because every 10 years we redraw the lines. And so tell us what, what encompasses, what's in the 150th district now? What, what counties? So now the 150th is all of Dunklin County, every bit of Dunklin County. It takes the southern and western part of Butler County. So uh, it runs south of 53, so we don't have Kewlin, but it goes south of 53 to the state line and all the way west to the Ripley County line. It takes in Neelyville, Harville, Stringtown, kind of runs up the, the western side of it. And then on the east, we take in, well, it kind of shoots over and takes in a portion of Wardell. Then it goes south, south of 412, all the way to the state line, east to the Mississippi River. But we don't have um, Hayti, we don't have Crothersville. We do have Steele, Cooter, Holland. So it is an unusually shaped district, pretty large district. Yet prop before the 150th changed recently, it cut, it was cut almost the gravel road that where, where I live. I was pushed, my home and our farm was pushed to Butler County or at that district. And so it would, it divided actually my mom and my dad's home from me. So even they couldn't vote for me if in the old district. And, so. and, you know, and most of Malden, you know, Malden was out of the district. Yes, it was, it was, yes. you know, I guess this is the first time at least in my memory, where Dunklin County is, is all in one district again. Right. You know, before me it wasn't, uh, I didn't have the southern part of Dunklin County. I had the north part, uh, north two thirds from Kennett North, yeah. but didn't have uh, any of southern Dunklin County. Well, uh, all of Dunklin is in it this time, so that's the one county that is whole in this, in this district. Well, it's interesting, it happens every 10 years, every time we do a new census, uh, and the lines always wind up differently. I think they, I personally think they, that they start somewhere else and work their way out to us and then whatever's <laughs> left, they, that's kind of what they do to us. You think uh, they forget about the boot hill? Sometimes that happens, <laughs> I believe. Um, maybe less so this time because the counties seem to be a lot more intact than they have been in the past, you know, with New Madrid and, and Mississippi both intact in one district, which hasn't happened in a long time, so. All right, well, you know, that's awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to, to get out of, of that discussion. You're, you're very fortunate, and I'm a little envious, <laughs> because uh, you are running unopposed in both the primary and the general election. Uh, so, you know, to use a, uh, a Latin uh, law term, you're the de facto representative already. <laughs> you know, you're not, you haven't been elected yet, but for all intents and purposes, you are, in fact, the, the state representative in January. So... Um, but you're still having to get your name out there. You're still having to meet people because 
you know, you want to talk to them, you want to campaign a little bit, but even though you don't have an opponent, you need to get to know people. And so what have you been doing to campaign? So I've had several, be I've had a, obviously a presence on social media, but then I have had a campaign kickoff at Holcomb and it was our first meet and greet is what I'm calling these things where you can come out, I'm there for a couple of hours, I, I visit with folks, sometimes we have food, sometimes we have snacks. I've had one in Malden, I have, I've had one in Zenith, and then I plan to have uh, one I think Thursday in Pemiscot County, actually Crothersville, but the Pemiscot County. And so trying to get all to the local areas. I want to get to every single town to meet everybody. I'm not necessarily going door to door at this point, but um, I'm not opposed to that. So I'd like to, you know, and if anybody wants to have any questions, get on my social media. I have a website. I have an email. I'd be glad to talk to anybody uh, if, if they have any questions about anything. But... Is that something that you intend to continue? I mean, I would suggest you do. Those meet and greets, those opportunities like town hall situations after you get elected? Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't say this a while ago, but I'm also trying to go to the nutrition centers uh, during certain, either Thursday or Friday during lunchtime to meet folks in, in those areas as well. Because one thing I've learned, and, and I may be jumping ahead, Philip, but one thing I've learned is there are a lot of people in our 37,000 number of population that I don't know. <laughs> Lots of folks here. And I would like to get, I think I know a lot of people in my practice of law, but I, I, I don't. So I'd like to meet every single person in my district, if that is possible. So I, I learned the same thing, you know, that there are so many people. You, you do know a lot of people. You, you realize you know a lot of people, but you realize there are a whole lot more that you don't. And, and you're trying to get out there and meet them. Um, I, I was surprised uh, that there were times I would go in a room and there wasn't a single person that I knew. Um, and for me, you know, I'm a little bit of an introvert. Uh, I've tried to overcome that over the years, but uh, there were times I would sit outside of, of a meeting that I knew I didn't know very many people in, and I would kind of <laughs> psych myself up to go into that meeting and, and kind of, you know, go in, you're going to introduce yourself to people, here's what you're going to say, just to get myself fired up to, to go in and meet new people. Um, we also learn a lot of, about ourselves, which I just told you, I learned a lot about myself running for office and on the campaign trail. This isn't your first time on the campaign trail, but it's a lot different running for state representative as opposed to running for school board in Campbell. Right. Um, you know, a lot more people, uh, just a more high profile position. Um, you're fortunate, as I mentioned, not to have an opponent at this point, but you're still a lot more area to cover uh, in your district. So what have you learned? You mentioned you, you learned that you, you don't really know as many people as you thought, but what have you learned and gained uh, for yourself from this campaign process? Well, not for myself per se, but I've met a lot of good folks mm -hmm. already just early on in this. I mean, we're really only six months into this, and I didn't decide to run until about three weeks prior to the sign-up. So this has been something that's kind of been a whirlwind. So uh, I've learned... I've met a lot of great folks already, and I'm looking forward to meeting the rest of them. Uh, it, it's a lot of hard work. I mean, even running unopposed is not uh, a walk in the park. And for a while there, after I had um, signed up, and then once the signing ended, I didn't have an opponent, So, but I was still getting up every morning at 4.30 and working in my home office, working on my campaign. And finally, my husband stopped me one day, and he said, do you understand that you don't have an opponent? <laughs> but it's just something you, you know, when you do something, even on a post, you want to do it well. And that's what I want to do as state rep. I want to do this job well. I want to represent our citizens well, even, you know, at home. If you need me, I'm at home. If you need me at the state capitol, that's where I'm going to be. And so that's one thing I think I've learned even more that I'm going to throw myself into this job, no matter opposed or unopposed. Well, and that's one of the things that, that um, I wanted to kind of ask you about. Um, you're going to be replacing a, an eight, a four term uh, legislator. Right. You know, in, in Missouri, we have term limits that require uh, that you only serve a maximum of four terms right. in the House, eight years, or two terms in the Senate, also eight years. Um, and so Andrew McDaniel has served us for the last eight years, and he's leaving, and you're brand new. I mean, so. Um, how do you kind of make up for that, la that lack of experience or that, that difference in experience that, that you're going to be going into it with? Well, and I think one thing I'm going to try to do is, is prepare. You know, I've already got the House rules. I've talked to former representatives about, hey, 
what, where do I start? What do I need? What committees do I need to do? I mean, I think if you kind of prep yourself already and, and try to learn what you're going to be doing, I mean, I know I'm going to go in. This has been a learning process, just the election process in and of itself. So I think it's going to be a learning process. I think my experience as an attorney helps me. I was an intern or I took a college class, an internship at the state capitol when I was in college. So I think that background, my living here my entire life, th those things will help me. You know, I think I can hit the ground running and that's what I plan on doing. I want to go in and, and not be one that, hey, I'm, I'm two years in and I'm just getting my feet wet. I would like to be able, and, and that you, you've been there, you've done it, so that might not be something I can do, but that's what I would like to do. And glean experience from Representative McDaniel and, and, the, and the former representatives that we've had. So. Well, and, and one of the things that was totally different from, from my initial days in the legislature as opposed to what you're going to face is, you know, there were a lot of people in the legislature that I worked with and, and debated and talked to that had, in fact, some that had been in the legislature longer than I had been alive. Oh, wow. I was 28 years old when I was first elected. And there were senators that had been in the Senate, in the House and Senate together, in the legislature for over 30 years. Um, obviously, that predated term limits. Right. Uh, and so those people were still there. In fact, the year that I decided to come home was when they decided, when term limits kicked out a bunch of people. So there were like 90 new members that year. And, and so it's, it is different today. There's no reason you can't hit the ground running. When I got there, it was basically sit here for two years and learn how to do the process. Right. Um, which was tough because I knew I was under term limits. And if I was going to stay for eight years, I needed to get the ball rolling and get moving. Um, but you also had a whole lot of people that had been there a long time that had paid their dues that were, you know, that, that needed to carry that bill or needed to be up on the floor that day. Or had whatever. the seniority. So, absolutely, absolutely. And so it was hard to get committee chairs. It was hard to get those kind of things uh, when you were brand new because of the fact that you, those people had been around a long time you're gonna be in a different boat. You'll be able to get those things happening a whole lot sooner. Uh, a committee vice chair, probably the first year that you're there and just work your way up. Because um, you know, I'm very excited about your chances of working your way up in leadership. I said that from the beginning when someone first mentioned you as a possibility to run. Um, I mean, you're very capable, you're intelligent, you're, you know, you're an attorney, which not everybody in leadership is, uh, but you do have an advantage. And so, that moves, brings us to kind of what are your expectations? You know, uh, you, you mentioned some of those already, um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about your priorities. What, what do you expect to be what you take on initially? Okay, well I think in my priorities, I want to bring, well I want to make Southeast Missouri, uh, th I want it to thrive basically. And so I think economic development is huge for our area. Uh, I think our infrastructure is, is a big, big deal and I would like to help develop that. I'm city attorney for several uh, municipalities here locally in, in Southeast Missouri, not just in my district, but in Southeast Missouri. And it seems like we always have the same issues. We have road issues, we have water issues, we have lack of police issues, we can't find quality you know, policemen that will want to come to those small towns. And so those issues are big issues for Southeast Missouri. Obviously the agriculture industry, we want to make sure that our ag economy can continue to support our farmers, our family farms, our small businesses, things like that. And then obviously education. Um, I, I told you before we went on the air that I have recently been, I've been endorsed by the MSTA, which is a big deal. So I would like to continue to protect our education our teachers, especially our, um, our administrators, our local schools. I always say this, my mom was a school teacher for 33 years, so teachers are near and dear to my heart. My mom, my sister, both my sister-in-laws, I mean, almost every female in my entire family is in the education profession. And so that's something I think that is very important to me going forward, is to protect that, to protect our reti their retirement, because those folks, your wife is a teacher, they're on the front lines every day. Absolutely. And so those, and those are some of the things, I mean, those are just a very few of the things. I mean, you drive through any small town in Southeast Missouri and you see the same thing I see. We have buildings that are crumbling. We have downtown areas that are failing. I went to college and, and came back to Southeast Missouri, as did you, as did many folks in this area. 
you know, my vision for Southeast Missouri is that my kids would be able to return home. Your kids will be able to return home and it be sustainable for them. And so those are some of the big things. And I know there are a lot of, lot of issues that will come up when I get up there. So that's not everything, but those are some of the, the big priorities that I have going, going to Jeff City. So. Well, and a lot of those things, you know, were similar 25 years ago right. when I first ran the first time. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a real challenge. Uh, it really is because, you know, we've seen a, a serious loss of population in the region. Um, you know, because of the fact that we've lost industry. Um, you know, we are currently sitting in what used to be a factory Absolutely. Uh, that employed a lot more people than are employed at Acorn Media. Um, you know, there are other buildings around us here on the, the Air Base Industrial Park here at Malden that are empty right. um, that were, when I was in the legislature, were thriving industries. Right. Um, you know, we're just a stone's throw from Federal Mogul, which closed right after I left the legislature. And, and you know, it's just, th th those are the things that we have to find a way, some kind of um, mechanism to, to create jobs in the area that are sustainable. Right. Well, and, and you know, in my law practice, many, many of my clients uh, that come in, they drive to, to Newport, you know, to, to south, you know, 30 minutes south of Stateland, south of our, my district. Right. They drive to western Tennessee to, um, you know, to have their job. We need that here. Mm -hmm. That's what we need in southeast Missouri now. And, and that's what I would like to do, to bring that back, bring those jobs back, you know. And I think uh, industry, you know, our, our economy and our education, all of those things are important um, for us to continue to grow. So. And education is hugely important because, you know, you probably know from having worked with several communities that one of the things that, that manufacturers or other business people will ask about is, is the workforce and the, is the workforce educated? Right. And, it, right. and they're gonna look at your school systems, they're gonna look at your, um, your, the situation that around those individuals and say, do the, can they do what we need them to do? Right, whether it be high school education, your trade schools are, are hugely important, you know, and then the people that want to go on to college, that's great too, but all of these things, we just need that education, right. to, to, like you said, to educate our workforce so we would have the workers available. And I'm glad to see that, I know that, that Governor Parson has really pushed, um, you know, vocational education. Right. Uh, my son went to the State Technical College of Missouri in Lynn, one of the best technical universities in the United States. It ranks in the top five all the time and some, some uh, scales ranks number one. Right. But kids around here don't even know about it. Right. Um, they can use their A-plus scholarships, all that stuff, and it's not that far away. No. You know, it's a four-hour drive. Um, and, but kids don't, they, they haven't been getting the same information about it that they might have been getting about Southeast Missouri State because we know about it or Arkansas State. Right. Um, so I'm encouraged by that and I'm hoping that the, the schools will see that as a priority and start to look at those kinds of yeah. institutions well. Well, and, and you mentioned A+. Plus. I mean, my son's on a baseball scholarship, but he also did A+. Plus, and so he's able to go to Three Rivers the first two years. And that is a wonderful opportunity. It's a perfect fit for him. He didn't, you know, my daughter wanted to go off to Mizzou to, the, mm -hmm. to college up there. That's a good fit for her, but sure. he wanted to stay local and, and it's been really, really good. We really have... He's and you well all have been there. able to watch him play ball too. Watch him play ball but and get to see him. Yeah, and get <laughs> so, to see him. That's yeah, right, so. exactly. You know, I had one son that went, as I mentioned, to Lynn and one who went off to Philadelphia, <laughs> halfway across <laughs> right. the country to go to school. And, and it, it was a big difference in, yeah, in when we could see them. So. That's right. So. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm going to give you the, the last word, even though you don't have an opponent. <laughs> I want you to be able to, to share your vision uh, in a couple of minutes here as to, to what, you know, just to share with the voters of the 150th okay. legislative well, district. Thank you for having me. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, and, and to our voters of the 150th, I'm excited. I'm actually delighted to be able to serve. I know I'm not there yet, but I'm looking forward to that. And, and I do believe that I'll be serving the best district in the state with the best people. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been Cameron Bunting Parker, our de facto new representative for the 150th Legislative District. Uh, we're looking forward to what she does to represent us in Jefferson City. Uh, thanks for joining us in the arena once again. 
Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll be back with more in the arena.